first encounter a patient in a vegetative or a minimally conscious state? And on my first day, which was the 7th of July 2003, in this hospital. And what was your experience when you saw them? How did you feel? Can you remember? Um, it was a bit shocking. It was a bit shocking um, because I've never seen uh, such patients. Mm. Uh, although I had a, a lecture um, when I was doing my MSc in Neuro Rehab, mm. uh, we had a lecture from Pauline Pope about people with severe and complex uh, deformities and disorders of consciousness. Mm. So I had some theoretical knowledge, but here was the first patient I was seeing. Mm. Um, and there was, a, there was a lot of confusion because nobody knew what the patient was able to do or not do, whether the patient was moving their uh, leg to command uh, or was it just an involuntary movement, for example. So uh, I would say things have changed quite a lot and we have come a long way in understanding more about disorders of consciousness, but we still do have much longer to go as well. And you can still give a date to that first encounter and the shock and confusion. What was the shock when you say you had all this theoretical knowledge? Why was it shocking to see? Um, it might be cultural, uh, because coming from South India, um, we wouldn't have the opportunities to see many such patients being kept alive with feeding tubes or with a long-term tracheostomy, and these patients being washed and dressed and pushed in the wheelchair on a day-to-day -day basis. So the amount of resources going into a type of patient who we know is not going to change massively um, was not available in my home country. So that was one of the first challenges. <coughs> the second challenge was on the other side, flipping it over, how much resources was being put on to provide good care and treatment to those patients? Too many resources almost. If you think about equality globally, or even within a nation, you have people who, in some countries who can't get basic care. Is that a social justice issue for you or what? Um, um, probe that a bit. Probably. Um, but um, it, if, if I talk about South India, it's more likely the case that the whole family unit will come in to support a patient rather than being dependent on the state. So uh, as soon as the patient is medically stable, uh, more, the most likely advice from the t medical team to the patient's family will be, you can now take your spouse home and care for your spouse at home. So you wouldn't see what happened, but it would be the family and the whole kinship would fall together True. to support that person. True. True. Does that was that a shock in terms of how families and kin operate, and it's much more nuclear family here, or abandonment is more likely? Very, very, very much, very much. Uh, I think that was part of the shock on the first day as well, <laughs> because it, it it almost felt like the patients were left in a place, and then my other colleagues would tell me uh, so-and-so's family come during Christmas time, but there was another patient whose family were here every single day, nine to five, day in, day out, they were here, and uh, they still considered the patient who was very, very clearly um, in a prolonged disorder of consciousness to be part of the family, and they were sharing every single thing with the patient. So it was shocked to see both end of the spectrum.